of the celebration of new ministry, the celebration of a new chapter in the life and ministry of a parish, and the new chapter in the life and ministry of a new rector is a different sort of occasion. You know, so many times when the church gets together, and rightly so, we get together to give thanks to God for what God has done among us, for what God has accomplished among us, uh, to give thanks to God for the gifts that He has given and bestowed upon us. And all of those acts, uh, the act of giving thanks is, is always sort of framed in the sort of up to now. We are grateful to God for what God has done among us up to now. Well, this evening, it's a different sort of gathering because even though we have much to give thanks for, we have much to give thanks for in the history and mission of the mission and ministry of St. James Parish. We certainly have things already in a relatively new vocation to give much thanks to God for in terms of Joseph's vocation and that of his family. But tonight's special vocation is to look forward, to open a new chapter, to turn the page to where there is as yet no writing, and to begin to create a new part of the story of the mission and ministry of St. James in this place, and a new part of the story in the mission and ministry and priestly vocation of Joseph Shippen. It's a time to think in terms of new beginnings. It's a time to think about what might be possible. It's a time to dream dreams and expect that God will in fact do great and mighty things among us. As we are wont to say over and over in the church, hold on to your hat because God is not finished with us yet. Now, I hope if you were paying attention during the reading of the lessons, you noticed that most of them were about escaping suffering, about somehow dodging the jaws of the evil one. The lessons were about when the chips are down and you're in the face of enemies and those that can't stand you, those who want to take away your life, then this is what you might do to be faithful. Well, now, friends, it's important to understand that Joseph did not pick those lessons <laughs> because he lives in some sort of fear of his ministry here at St. James being like sort of caught in the jaws of the evil one. I mean, hear those words from the beginning of the gospel. See, says Jesus, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as a serpent and innocent as a dove. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils. They will flog you in the synagogue. And they will drag you before governors and kings and bishops because of me. That, that last part was an editorial. <laughs> but let me cut right to the chase and say, well, the reason these are the lessons, and it gave me enormous admiration for your new priest when he emailed me and said, should we use the lessons for the celebration of new ministry, or should we keep the feast that falls on this day? And like a good son of the General Seminary, I said to him, well, we will keep the feast. And today, sisters and brothers, is the feast of James Hamilton. Probably not a household name in most of making. But let me tell you just a little bit about James Hamilton. He was born in England, in Surrey, just south of London, in the middle of the 19th century. And after uh, college and university and doing some other things in his vocation, he finally finally got a theological education and volunteered for missionary service with the Church Missionary Society and was sent to East Africa where he immediately became ill and had to return to England to get well. After two or three years of convalescence and getting his health back, they made him the bishop of East Equatorial Africa. Uh, uh, he'd never served a parish. He'd never done much of anything. 
but he was willing to go to Africa, and so they made him a bishop and sent him there to be the missionary to um, East Equatorial Africa, to the region that we would now know as Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, and that area. Uh, the reason we remember Hannington and his companions uh, is because he uh, stood up uh, as a preacher of the gospel to the uh, uh, kings and political leaders of East Africa at the time. Uh, these were not Christian territories. These were not Christian nations. And he was there as a missionary to preach the gospel, to tell the story of Jesus, and to start the church in that part of the world. And of course, as you might imagine, the king of Uganda was not particularly happy about this missionary activity. And uh, Hannington and his companions were uh, taken hostage, they were tortured, and eventually they were killed on October 29th, 1885. They were martyred for their faith in Jesus. They gave up all of it so that they could give witness to their faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, the church uh, in that place um, has often uh, been reflected in its history. One of the early fathers of the church said that the blood of the martyrs, the blood of those who gave up their life for the sake of the gospel is the seed of the church. Well, in a time not so long ago, James Hannington and his companions gave their life and their blood was the seed that grew Christian faith in East Africa. So that perhaps gives you some indication tonight why these readings um, seemed a bit severe for a time of celebration like we are having uh, this evening. However, I, I believe that there are some teachings, some things for us to reflect on in these readings that are very much apropos to the celebration of this new wedding between priests and people here at St. James. And first of all, I want to say that James Hannington did his ministry very clearly among the people. When we read the history of Hannington and we read the work that he did up to the time he was killed for the faith, you get a very strong sense that it is ministry among the people. Not so much ministry for the people, or ministry by the people, or ministry to the people, but ministry among the people. There's sort of an incarnational aspect to this. Hannington went and stood among, lived among, prayed among, worshipped among the people that God sent him to serve. And it seems to me that that is a very powerful image for the priestly ministry that gets its renewal on this evening. To think not only in terms of how Father Joseph might in fact be among us, but how also as a congregation, as the faithful in this place, we make it possible for him to be among us. That we open our doors, we open our arms, we open our hearts, we open every door that we can find so that his presence, his among us, is as congenial and gracious and loving and full as possible. In the gospel, we heard just a moment ago that it was a pretty grim picture. Those are not the pieces of the gospel that I hope you will remember. But there is that wonderful phrase in the gospel that I think is key for tonight. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. And it's that little phrase that I want to think about just for a moment. 